Howdy gang, Michelle here, and today I'm going to show everybody how easy it is to do this beautiful trinket tray, which is in the shape of a feather, um, that I did, and it was kind of a, you know, let's mess around and see what happens kind of thing, and it came out gorgeous. I mean, look at that color shift and shine. It's just gorgeous. So let's get into it. What I am using, obviously, you need the feather mold. I will put in the description all the links for everything that I have and where you can get them from. Um, this is the second time using this mold. The first time I wasn't really happy with how it came out, but um, I thought I'd give it another shot. So, feather mold. Or you can do this with anything, really, if you have coasters or you have, um, you know, little pop socket molds or anything. You can do this with any kind of mold. Um, you're going to need some medicine cups for your epoxy. I have a bigger cup so that way I can pour them into that. I am using counterculture DIY medium viscosity. This is part B. Obviously, this is part A. Um, I love this because it's less bubbles and it is perfect for this because you don't have a lot of surface area to get in there and pop your bubbles. And usually what I do is I spray a little bit of um, isopropyl alcohol in my mold before I lay it in but because you can't really do it with this because of how we're going to use the powder that I'm going to use to get this iridescent look it it doesn't work well so you can't spray it um, for this one because this one that I did I used this off-brand blue um, glitter I didn't put any color in this it was just glitter that I dumped into the epoxy but that's the color of this one, and I thought this would look awesome on a black base. So, I am using, um, from, again, Counterculture DIY Black Diamond Intense Color. This stuff is amazing as a epoxy additive. You only need, like, a drop or two. I mean, it's literally, like, bam, in your face, okay? So, we're going to be doing that as the black base. And then this, which is called Over the Rainbow... It's actually a holographic top coat additive. So usually a lot of people will add a little bit of this into um, their final coat of tumblers or something like that. And it gives you that gorgeous holographic look. Now I'm working on another project. I'm grabbing it here real quick. And as you can see, I used it in this so you could see the shimmer in that. Okay. But the effect that I'm going to go for with this is what we did with this to give that shimmer and that holographic glow. So this you can get from Grateful Glitters. I absolutely love them just as much as I do my CC DIY. And actually Grateful Glitters is a distributor of CC DIY. So bonus. So let's get started. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go right into mixing my epoxy because while that's setting and you know the air bubbles are coming out, I'm going to prep my mold. So let's get started. For this, I'm going to do 60 mil total. So 30A, 30B. All right. So let's start with A. A always goes much slower. See if I can. And with my bottles, I always, with my epoxy, sorry, I didn't mean to have my hand in the way. With my epoxy, I like to keep them, I find ideally between 68 and 70 degrees. So here in my craft room, I keep it that for the most part. Um, I live in Washington State. So depending on where you live, um, it's really up to you. It actually is very nice out today. So I don't have to have my space heater on. We keep our house at 65 degrees all the time. So if I need a little bit warmer, then I just kick on the little space heater. All right. So there is 30 mil of A and B comes out super fast. So this is going to fill up really quick. And my favorite epoxy, obviously, is all the ones from CCDIY. Um, I do a lot of tumblers and stuff also. 
Um, I find that medium viz is perfect for molds and for tumblers that are with very thin to minimal glitter. Um, and then obviously I love facet and um, for the flood coat, I always go with artist resin. Okay, so let's mix these two together. Scrape that all the way out. Get it. And I always suggest putting them into a bigger cup when you're working with more than 30, um, or excuse me, 20, 20 mils total. So that way, you know, as you're mixing it, it doesn't make a mess, doesn't get all over the place. Scrape down those sides really, really well. Grab everything on the bottom. I have silicone cups, but I'm the most impatient person in the world. I will admit, like, I'm the kind of person that stands in front of the microwave going, come on! Um, so I rarely use them because they take forever to dry and peel everything out. So I actually found a really good deal on these medicine cups and I have a crap ton of them. Okay. So I got everything out of that one. That was part A. Now part B, bloop, that one basically just pours itself out, but always scrape just to make sure you get every single drop of that goodness. All right, now I suggest also using a silicone stir like this, anything other than a popsicle stick. And the reason why is popsicle sticks, because they're natural wood, will cause it to get more bubbles. Whereas the silicone sticks or um, the metal stirs will not give it as many bubbles and it will the the bubbles that do show up will dissipate so what i like to do is i like to mix it together get it as clear as possible before i put my additive in there and the other great thing with this is the bubbles are they float around i don't know if you can see them floating around it's like i have a bubble machine at my fingertips here <laughs> So get a quick, hard mix on this. And I do have a lot of bubbles in there, but that's going to, they're going to disappear. Trust me. That's why I like medium viscosity. And they also have a thin viscosity that works really well with molds as well. I prefer the medium because it's more um, versatile for me because I can use it for molds and tumblers. But it's totally up to you. If you're somebody that prefers to do molds more, hey, you know, whatever tickles your fancy. All right. So most of this cloudiness is from bubbles because when it's straining like that, you can see it's pretty clear. So what I'm going to do at this point, don't freak out because of the bubbles. It does have a lot of bubbles right now. See, that's okay because they're going to start popping. They're going to come to the surface and, you know, see, look, pop, pop. They're all popping. So with this intense color, Something that I always recommend, trust me, I'm telling you from experience, make sure that you close the lid, tighten it before you start shaking it. It's coming from experience. My office here has a green carpet with a blue stripe now from the cobalt. <laughs> so give it a really good shake. Then, literally, when I say you just need a drop or two, you literally just need a drop or two of this because it is one, two. We'll do three because I have 60 mil, three. Usually I do um, like one drop in 10 to 20 mil. So we'll mix this and we'll see. Oh yeah, three drops and it's like black magic. So just mix that in really good. And check the bottom. This is why I like working with clear cups because sometimes when you're mixing you miss a lot on the bottom so mix that up super super good 
All right, now I'm gonna set that over here and let it get happy, let the bubbles come out naturally. Now, you're gonna need a brush. I pick up these um, inexpensive Crayola pack type of brushes at either Michael's or Joann's. You can get like 10 of them for like three bucks. Okay, so whatever kind you get that you can use that gets into cracks and crevices and everything really well, do it. So for this, it is literally like dust. It is super, 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 super fine. Like super freak fine. So take your brush and just kind of dip it in there and um, tap it off just a little bit and then get it here into the crevices. Open this up. Don't be afraid to spread it around. Now I've tried to use flakes before and, and that's why the first one I did I wasn't happy with because they don't spread as easily as this stuff does. I mean, already it's got a really great coating on it. I'm gonna get down here and make sure you get the top side of this as well. I mean, it's kind of like when you make a sandwich. You don't wanna put like mayo or mustard just on one side of the bread. You want it on both sides so you can get that flavor all the way through. Same thing with this. You wanna get it all over it so you get that color and get all the way down in here into the bottom part. Brush it around. Open it up. And get all the way up in here. And because this is a silicone mold, it's easy enough to move around and get that powder in there. Now I'm sure you could do this with um, a regular mica powder also. I haven't yet. I love this additive. Sorry the pups are outside and they're playing. So that's who you hear barking. It's a gorgeous day here so birds are chirping, dogs are barking. And I'm here showing you guys how to do cool stuff. Now here at the tip where this piece is, you really have to make sure to get that color down there. So jam your brush down there, wiggle it around as much as possible. All right, so when it looks like it's completely covered and pull back the sides just to make sure you have everything completely covered. Just run your brush through one more time just to play it safe. There's a piece of fuzz. Nope. Get out. All right. So this looks pretty good to me. And as you can see, let me close this up because now my luck, I will knock it over. I have a huge jar of this too. I bought a lot of these and I put them in one big jar because I use this, you know, for everything. Okay. So as you can see, it's completely covered. I mean, just by that, that's just hello gorgeous. All right. So now what I'm going to do is even though the bubbles have all come up to the top, I am going to do a very slow pour on this. So let me pull all this extra epoxy off of my stick. Let's spray my stick with some alcohol and clean it off real quick so that doesn't dry on there. That's why I love these silicone sticks. They're easy to clean. And just spray a little bit of alcohol on it, wipe it off, bam. Okay, so now what you're gonna do with this is you don't wanna rush this pour. You're going to simply open up this side, slowly start to pour it in, and then turn it. Do the same thing on the other side because you gotta give this time to get in all the cracks and crevices. Don't be afraid to help it move around. So lift it up, shift it up. Okay. 
go straight down and with this one you're gonna have to give it a little help because these will seal up pretty quick up here on the sides so I use let me grab one of these I have tons of these skewers so that way you don't get it all over your fingers and just kind of open this up a little bit and you can see it's starting to settle in there now you can see right here there's a pocket in there so what I'm gonna do There we go. Get that little bubble out of there. And make sure that you spin this around, check it, open up these sides. That way, all the epoxy can get down in there and it'll pull out any air bubbles that you happen to have in there. And don't be afraid to push down a little bit. There you go. Pour the rest. I'm going to grab my stick. Oops. Scrape down those sides. Get all those juicy bits. Obviously that's not filled all the way up to the top yet. And I'm going to pour a little bit more. Oops. Super careful when you're cleaning up any overspill, obviously, because this is very soft. There we go. Okay. So I have a stick lighter that I use when I do molds like this to make it easier, just to kind of grab those bubbles and pop those. I'm going to let this sit for about 30 minutes and then I'm going to mix up another 20 mils, 10 a 10 B to top off this base, but I'm going to let this sit for about, you know, 30 minutes or so just to let any air bubbles come up and then I will be back. Alrighty gang. So 30 minutes has passed. I'm going to use my, um, candlestick lighter here real quick, just to run over last pass to see if there's any more bubbles that need to pop. And it doesn't look like there is any, that's why I love using medium viscosity for this because Usually you only have to run a pass like twice to get any bubbles and you're good to go. Now I've already mixed while we were waiting um, just to let all the bubbles rise. Uh, 20 mils, so 10 part A, 10 part B, and then literally one drop of the intense black. Now, if you can't get the, the black diamond intense color, they also have in the dispersion colors, which are a little bit thicker, um, but you still only need, you know, literally a drop or two. In the dispersing colors, you can get ebony, um, but they have a huge variety of colors. I own almost all of them, or yeah, no, I own all of them. Um, it, it's a must have in your arsenal of good stuff. So I'm gonna take my stick later real quick and just kind of move these bubbles out of the way here also, out of my cup. Just to make sure before pouring it to finish it off, I have most of them out. 
All right, so I don't want to mess with this too much and move it around. What I did is I poured 60 mil part A of 30, 30 of part A, 30 of part B in this after I brushed it. And I filled it only to this point. And the reason why I didn't mix 80 is because I let this sit because of how this mold is. I let this sit only to this point just to have any residential uh, residual bubbles come up. And then I can pop them easy and then pour the rest of it in. Okay, which is what I'm going to do with this 20. So very, now I want to make it where it's as level as possible. You don't want to dome this at all because it needs to sit flat on a surface. If you dome it, it's just going to, you know, wobble all over the place. Look how pretty that is. Okay. See, shiny things. I'm done. So you're just slowly, I'm going to grab my popsicle stick so I can catch anything coming over. Just going to go in here. And just go right down that center, working it back and forth. And this is going to take this whole 20. Now, if you want to do more, you could probably get away with 30 on this. But I find with 20, it works great. And just scrape down those sides. Because it's it's literally like right almost to the rim. But I give it a little bit of breathing room. So I don't want to force it with 30. That's why I've done with 20. And just kind of gently scrape that off. And then again, stick lighter. And just come in here. I don't use my blowtorch um, with these because it's too hot. I find that the stick lighter is perfect for smaller molds like this. That's just me. All right, so I'm going to let that sit. I'm going to check it in about 10 minutes to see if there's any more bubbles that need to pop. Now, this sheen that you see on the top that looks like bubbles, it's not. It's a little bit of this additive that might have been loose and it comes up, which is perfectly fine. Um, no big deal. So I'm going to let this sit for um, about 15 minutes, come back, check for any more bubbles. And then after that, I'm going to move it to the drying area where I put my molds. And I will see you guys in 24 hours, but that's only going to be like a second or two for you guys. So there we go. 24 hours later. All right, here we are seconds later for you guys and eternity for me because I'm the most impatient person in the world. So today we get to unmold this beauty that we did yesterday. I did. You watched. And just to recap, we are doing one similar to this, but we're going to use a black base. Obviously, it's black for this one. Um, this one here, big question I got asked in comments was, what color did I use to add to the epoxy? Um, I did not use any color for this. I used this particular glitter, which is blue with like a color shift in it of like peach. And it's off brand. I think I got it at Michael's. I didn't want to use any of my expensive glitters for this because I just was messing around and I didn't want to waste any. So that's what I used for this. And I will have links to everything I used in the description below. Okay. And the um, iridescent look to this is over the rainbow. It is a holographic top coat additive that I get from Grateful Glitters. I absolutely, this is my go-to glitter company. Love them to pieces. Jessica and Kevin are amazing. They actually have a storefront in Mesa, Arizona. So if you're in Mesa, stop in, tell them Michelle sent you. They'll hook you up with some really, really, really great glitter. And if you buy online, you buy three, you get one free. I kid you not. Go check them out. Okay, so this is what I used to brush inside the mold because I've used flakes and stuff before and, and I just don't really like them as much as I do 
using this because this brushes in a lot smoother, easier, no stress. And then for this particular one here, what I used in the uh, resin is Black Diamond. It's from CC DIY, Counterculture DIY. And um, this is a very thin colorant that you can add into resin. Now they do have another, it's called a dispersion color, which will still give you the same depth, but this is a little bit thicker than the intense color. I prefer using the intense color, but I have every single dispersion uh, color as well. And I think all the intense colors too. No, I don't have a problem anyway. <laughs> and the great thing is, is all these products, um, the dispersion colors and the resin, I used counterculture DIY medium viscosity for this particular, because I love how it works um, with molds and very little bubbles. So you don't really have to worry about that. So again, I'll have all the links in the description below. So let's scoot this guy out of the way and get to this beauty. Now it looks like there's glitter in here. There's really not. It's a little bit of the additive that maybe was loose and just kind of floated up to the top. And I'm okay with that. But look at that shine. I love using the resins from CC DIY because even with my tumblers, they always come out looking amazing with a shine like glass. Okay, so with this mold, I always stretch it quite a bit all the way around. Oh, look at that. Before I pop it out, because it is kind of like a funky mold. It's not just like a foam pop where you can just bloop, pop it out. Um, it's got a lot of little nooks and crannies. So I always prefer to unmold this end first before you get to the point because it's just a lot easier, I find. So I'm going to manhandle this just a little bit. Wow. I mean, this is the bottom and just look how intense it is. Wow. Let's pull that little nub off. Boom. This is just gorgeous. It's even more intense than this one here. So this is the light color one and this is the black one. Look at that. Just beautiful. Now, if you have a um, paint Sharpie or a paint pen, paint marker, and you want to define this rib right here, uh, you can do that. Or you can take a little bit of um, Mm, what am I thinking? Uh, gold flake and just kind of gold flake a little bit over these spots here and just make those, those dips in the feathers stand out more. It's completely up to you, but look at that. Just beautiful. And that's the back. You can see full coverage all the way around. Boom. So there we go two of them side by side, you can see the difference between the light color and the black. The black, in my opinion, looks a lot brighter as far as the um, iridescence. So there you go. All right, gang, thank you so much for joining me. And as I have more brain farts, you'll have more cool things to do. Thanks, gang. Have a great one. Bye.